Hello, my dear friends. Today, we are going to continue our review of the diary of German Oberlieutenant Martin Stiglitz. Remember to rate this video and also leave your opinion on this story. And we are about to begin. December 10th, 1941. For eight days, I've been in command of my company again. I had to cheer up the guys a bit to give them strength of spirit again. And they grew in these days of silence, externally and internally put themselves in order. And it was extremely important because for two days, it has been a record frost, negative 31 degrees Celsius. Now we have skis, as many as eight of them. And each day, no matter what the weather, I spend with my men in the fields. Practicing cross-country skiing. We follow the trail of the partisans. As soon as they show up nearby, and there are plenty of them here, we pursue them, something that is much more convenient to do with skis. The letters come with big delays, evidently because of Christmas parcels. Recently, we had an officer's dinner in the battalion. It was fun. We drank a lot of vodka. The only trouble is that there's nothing but schnapps. It's gross. Lieutenant Neumann joined the company yesterday. He was badly wounded on June 25th, but he is well now. He is a dutiful young man with a strong character. Penguin is with us again. He is as cheerful as ever. His wound is quite healed. Coincidentally, the next day, our general conducted the Iron Cross Awards, and Penguin was awarded the Iron Cross First Class. Our good old battalion commander, now unfortunately very ill, was awarded the Order of the German Cross. And everyone was very happy about it. Our regimental commander was also awarded the same order. Since December 12th, the regiment has successfully moved back into position on its former section. On December 15th, it will be our turn. We are expected the long winter months of positional warfare. Recently, I read Der Schatz by Edward Moraki, an exquisite, touching, well-written story. And then there was Morning Ride and The Mask of War. The first book was written by Wetzel and the second by Moller. I purposely choose literature that's more sophisticated. The brain must be at work. I must force myself into intellectual endeavor. Japan has entered the war with the United States, Britain, Australia, and the Dutch colonies. It was an incredible initial success for the Japs. It was like the May wind breaking in on the events of the day. And now I guess I'll read On War by Old Klauswitz. December 12th. Yesterday, Germany and Italy declared war against the USA. The Fuhrer got square with that hireling Roosevelt. Moreover, the Fuhrer outlined the entire previous course of the campaign in Russia. We are at Verdovo. Yesterday it was snowing incessantly, and today it is almost all melted. And what now? Now the wind has changed and blows its icy breath on us. Everything that was melting is freezing again. It's a typical pattern of late fall and early winter. December 21st. Our front line is located in the village of Kilkovo. On December 19th, I took a new section with the company. Here the lull for us ended. The company moved forward in two throws with an intermediate overnight stay in Krasnaya Gorka. I skied the whole distance, all 44 kilometers, together with my reconnaissance men. I spent the night at the regimental chief of staff, and the next day I got instructions already on the new location. We had to shoot a bit today. At about 5 p.m., a red reconnaissance group approached the only spot where there was a gap in the fence, but they were repulsed. Taking advantage of the blizzard, I at once sealed the gap with anti-tank hedgehogs and wire spiral. When another bad night comes, we will put some more mischief here. That's how we reinforce our positions day by day. I sent my first two leave-takers. The first one was Fuchs. There's a nice Christmas wreath on the table in the dugout in front of me. Today, a letter came from Mommy asking if I was healthy and if everything was all right with me. The envelope contained a picture taken somewhere near Leningrad. A wounded man lying on a stretcher, smoking a cigarette. It cannot be denied that he really looked like me in the profile. This was confirmed by everyone in the company's command and control department. That's why Mommy's worried. I'll write to her today. I'm under the command of Major von Duisburg, commander of the 3rd Battalion. Eric Bolta, our old strategist, paid me a visit today. We set up wires on all sides, and having dug interconnecting passages so that Eric Bolta could hear, we play gramophone records. We'll celebrate Christmas Eve in the dugouts. Well, that'll work. Today, it was reported, General Feldmarschall von Brockich and von Rundstedt have resigned. We don't know the reasons yet. Miscalculations? Rostov von Don? Klin? Tigvin? Who knows? We are soldiers. We are loyal to the oath, not to names. December 28th. 
Our Fuhrer has taken command of the ground forces. We infantrymen are especially delighted. The Fuhrer has shouldered even more of a burden. So far, everything is all right at the section, except for the regular firefights. On Christmas Eve, I went around all the dugouts and celebrated Christmas with my guys. December 29th. I just woke up. The sun shines brightly and white snow falls outside. The scenery is fantastic. Before Christmas, I paid a visit to Eric Volta, standing to my right. On the first day of the holiday, the commanders of all the companies of the 2nd Battalion, together with Chief of Staff and his deputy, organized a brief get-together in forest silence. Eric's dugout. At 2 p.m., getting there on skis, the regimental commander also joined us. He conducted the Iron Cross's awarding. Moritz Hinch, the regimental chief of staff, a great man, was with us as well. We asked Herr Lieutenant Colonel to let him stay with us. Hinch later took a nap in my dugout, after we went around the position together, fired machine guns and threw hand grenades. His only dream is to forget about all his paperwork for a couple of days, one day and go on a vacation for himself to our front line. Today our convalescents are coming back to the company. Everyone is extremely happy about it, and the guys are glad to be home again. Now we have to build more dugouts. That's a job for the sappers. They're awfully lazy men. Yesterday they had orders to put up anti-tank hedgehogs, but they left after only three hours. I was mad at them. My guys are out here day and night on the wire, and these good guys sleep five kilometers behind the front line and come here for only tours. January 3rd, 1942 Oh well, the last time I lowered the boom on the sappers. After the scolding, they are working perfectly well now. During the day, they are working, and at night, they are blowing something up. The company's losses are three men. Two of them are heavy machine gunners. Yesterday, the Russians broke a rut to the junction of my positions with the positions of the 10th Company. But let's talk about all this in order. On New Year's Eve, there was an unprecedented cannonade across the entire front. They fired everything. It was a great firework. Flares flew all the way to our rear. The anti-aircraft gun behind our positions fired whole bursts into the night sky. The Russians were out of their mind and were firing until dawn. On the first morning of the new year, I welcomed guests from the 89th Infantry Regiment. What a feast we had in my dugout. That is called first rate. In general, we drank everything to excess. We beat our frost record. It's negative 42 degrees Celsius. I even ordered to rotate the sentries once every half an hour. On the occasion of the new year, I got letters from many of my fellow soldiers. I was so happy. January 8th. All is quiet on the section so far. Yesterday I visited Von Plato, our neighbor on the left. We had a great time and drank a lot. Weber, the chief of staff, has just telephoned. The Russians have broken through our defenses to the south of Lake Ilman. The breakthrough, however, has already been localized, and there is no more danger to Staraya Rusa. But in many sections of our front line, the forces are very poor. On January 20th, my company will be replaced at the front line. We will have a little respite. Major Engel wrote to Hinch that there are not bad odds to weigh my neck with a new award. All in all, it's pretty weird that this is something I've known about for quite some time. The element of surprise and unexpected joy is completely lost. Regardless, once it happens, it will be a thing. January 12th On the night of January 10th, I was ordered to hand over positions by the evening of the same day to a company of tank destroyers. Besides us, other rifle companies will be replaced. Our new combat mission is to subordinate to the 123rd Infantry Division and engage in operations to eliminate the enemy breakthrough. The significant enemy forces broke through not far from here, and the 123 moved back, avoiding the battle, meaning the 123rd Infantry Division. Things happen. At night, we were replaced. We reached Krasnaya Gorka in a marching formation through terrible frost negative 35 degrees Celsius. In the morning on January 11th, we moved towards Bell on horse-drawn sledges, taking a field kitchen. Upon arrival, we got an order to move on to Linny. We reached it by 10.30 p.m. This morning, we received a new order to start setting up positions immediately. I have just dispatched a large reconnaissance unit under the command of Feldwebel Palkowitz. The division command orders us to take the defenses in separate companies. Sounds crazy to me. We should be held together and then take a combat-ready force. We shouldn't be fragmented. We expect the Luftwaffe to engage today and hit the Russians. The frost still doesn't abate. Three soldiers are already out due to frostbite. Our boots are absolutely not appropriate for the snowy and frosty winter.
and not all of us have a Valenki. I visited the battalion on the way here. They said that the submission for awarding me the Knight's Cross had not been approved by General Feldmarshal Keitel, and I wouldn't get the German Cross. January 13th. We are at Linear. Yesterday the Ivans assaulted us, and this morning they came at us again like idiots. They were tactically incompetent. That's why they were beaten. I grabbed my rifle and fought with the others. Now every killed or captured Russian is a coveted trophy for us. He has a white camouflage coat and palenki. Today one of my guys, Rifleman Kaufman, a perky young fellow from eastern Austria, was killed. Gefreiter Tyne was wounded, fortunately lightly. The Russians we killed will be a great honorary escort to my little Kaufman. The neighborhood of Staraya Rusa has been swept clean of the enemy. Fighting in the extreme cold requires a high degree of control mobility. We can't have everyone constantly on our front line, the snow rampart. We need to be rotating all the time, because 46 degrees minus and below, this is no joke. We don't forget to take off the Valenki from the dead Ivans. Our regimental commander now also has his own enemy sweep regiment under our number. So we are Scharf's special battalion, ironically. I think the sweep operations here will soon be finished. Well, what else is there to write about, except for the fact that I hit lice of all possible tonnages on a daily basis? That is all for today. You can watch other episodes of this diary by following the link in the pinned comment. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and support the channel by subscribing. See you all later. Until next time.